Hey, how's it going guys? So we've glitched out of Origins in theatre mode. It's the last video in this series, so let's get right onto it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go all the way up to that moon, that light there. Uh, and it's actually pretty cool when you go outside this like funnel of clouds, you can see just how they've kind of built the map. Uh, so looking down, that's how big, like that is huge. And you can kind of see like what is inside and what's out. Uh, and now the map's gone all funky, you know, it's gone all white, but, you know, going out of it, you can see it's like created a funnel, almost like a Christmas tree, in a way. So looking around at the skybox, once again, they like to use, I think this is like the Zetsubo one. They really like to use this one anyhow, like you got the cranes and shit in the distance, which doesn't make sense for Origins, but you're never meant to see it. But anyhow, it's, you know, it's just what it is. Looking at the planes, they might have just copied these straight from Zetsubo no Shima. I honestly can't remember what they look like. But, uh, yeah, they're like, they're not as detailed. I mean, look at the wheels. They're hexagons, but, you know, there's so many of them. And it just makes the atmosphere look so, so, so awesome. Let's check out the spawn room area, and I'm actually fairly certain they've changed it up somewhat. At least the outer area, because I remember I've looked at this in the original Origins. And there were some, you know, trench paths and all that outside around this area mostly. But they're not here in the original, because I think they use them for the cinematic cutscene. You know, I think there was a bunch of paths just kind of out here. But they're not here anymore, I'm pretty sure. So, I don't know what that's about. And I mean, you got all these destroyed buildings, all this fire. And all that. It's mainly like that throughout the whole map. Nothing really interesting. The giant ball of orange light over here though. It's meant to like kind of show like, oh hey, there's a fire over here. Now going over this way, away from the spawn room. It's actually pretty far out. Really surprising how far it goes. Um, because you don't generally look in this direction. You, you kind of look in all the other directions, but this one you don't. There's multi-story buildings, which is surprising. We've got a bit of a hill over here with more buildings on it. We got the robot over here, and I don't know if it's exactly the same, but it's in a similar position to how that robot in Dorizon Drac was. You know, maybe for the Dorizon Drac one, they just kind of straight up ported the one from Origins, and then for this one, they just, you know, kind of copied it straight from Dorizon Drac. Uh, there might be a few differences. Of course, there's nothing on the inside. Uh, that's to be expected because the head's all the way over there, which we'll see soon. So we've got more buildings, we've got fire coming over here because apparently there's like a turret or some shit over here <laughs> got the robot spawning over there um and then of course just another big orange light to signify a big fire so oh and we got a bloody power pole and this path over here which i never knew existed actually so yeah the robot just kind of goes upwards. Alright, so we'll see where the robot goes. He just starts walking down into the abyss. He drops. Is he still there? Yeah, he's still there. He just sinks down. And then, I think once he despawns, because he keeps coming for a while, and then another one should spawn over there. Maybe not instantly, but you know, that's how it happens. They don't go all the way around the world. And then over here, you know, you got more, like a lot more buildings actually. This is kind of like it's starting to become a town or a city over here. All right, so we're beneath the map. We've got the crazy place over there. We've got something underneath. I'm trying to, I don't know what the hell it is. I guess we'll go over and see if we can but I'm so curious as to what that what the hell it is it's a big red box apparently alright but what is it for is it meant oh maybe it's for the starves or the gems or something I don't know that's a bit weird so from this view it's a bit easier to see like the sky box is all it's pretty much like Zetsubos you've got cranes and shit over there which doesn't make sense uh, in like you know, 1918 or whatever. So we're clearly never meant to see it. But, you know, they like to reuse that one a lot. 
And yeah, we've got a clear view of that red box over there. And the uh, the walls. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. And then the trees are red because they're not textured fully while we're under here. Alright, so we're in the crazy place. We're up kind of above the roof. And this is what it looks like. You know, the stones up here are fully... You know, they've got markings and shit. And you can just see the roof up there. It's kind of like metallic reflecting like the teleporter boxes but no that's what it looks like and so we'll have to come back here when we do the egg and see like how that changes all right so we're below the map again and i don't know what the hell these are it kind of looks like the robot's foot or part of the robot um but why is it down here you know and i go up to it and nothing happens so this is at the very bottom of the map, but I'm not sure why it's here. You know, it's not loaded in properly. I don't know if we'll be able to see it or not. But it's just like, what is that? <laughs> Alright, so we're at the robot heads now, and honestly, I think they swapped the locations of these as well. Unless I'm just, I legitimately cannot remember. I swear to God, they were all the way over there by the crazy place, um, where the robots pretty much go. But now they're by where they spawn. So I'm not really sure what to think about that. They're in their own invisible box. But I mean pretty much like there's not much to see really with them. It's just like they're all three heads are together. You sometimes get a yellow glow of like all the staff pieces. I think that one's the radio. Yeah, that, that thing that kind of keeps appearing, that's the Avenged Sevenfold Radio for Shepherd of Fire. So yeah, it's um, pretty interesting nonetheless. And oh god, imagine if the sky looked like that. You know, this filter that seems to be on right now. Get that pinkish sky. That would be interesting to see. The interesting thing is you can object link onto the plane with the fire staff part. For god knows why, but that's pretty cool. So, I mean, we can follow its path here, which is awesome. Picks us out. And, I mean, you're not going to be able to do this, like, normally. Like, you can't reach up to the plane and, you know, physically get it to connect to it. But if you kind of get out like this, you know, you can get up to it and connect to it, which is awesome. Awesome job. All right, so here comes the blue ball. It's going straight up. Oh, okay, now it's gone. So it just seems to stop right in there, which is interesting. But yeah, the ball disappears about like three quarters of the way up. All right, so there's nothing in the pit. Um, just an empty room, but this is where all the panthers come out, so we're going to see that. Maxis goes down, up, and here they come. They're just spawning in, ready to come out. Oh, one, two, three, four. Pretty interesting and they're just all landing around the place so what's very interesting is that beneath generator 6 is there's a whole kind of like stone wall going around and it's not around the uh, ice cave because that's right here but like beneath it you know th there's a fair amount going on I'm just wondering why though so looking at how the walls fall you can actually see how they work so it seems to be in corners and stuff. So, I mean, and we can see that it being rebuilt there, that's pretty cool. But it looks like it's randomized, there's no specific kind of pattern to it. But from here, at least you can tell like, oh, there's one corner that's always alright. One, one side that's always fine. So from this angle, you can kind of see like all the pillars around, but you can also see the outside map part just over there in the corner which actually makes for a pretty cool uh, looking view all right here we go yep so we're in this weird little portal now and it's just a light there it's smaller than the other one so it doesn't go all the way up but gives you an idea so I don't know why but the red this random light just appears here I'm not sure why and I mean like the you know that portal thing hasn't disappeared but like it just randomly appeared before and I took away the light um, so you can see better but 
I'm not really sure the significance of it or why it even does it. It did it when the round changed. So maybe you have to does maybe it does maybe it has to do with the weather, possibly. Alright, so Maxi's drone's just come up. The beam comes out. And there we go. Alright guys, so that is Origins done, and with that, that's the last map of Black Ops 3 uh, that I should be doing for this. Uh, so the reason they've taken so long is because I just wasn't prepared for Zombie Chronicles. I wasn't prepared to do eight maps at once. Um, so that's kind of why it took a while. But, you know, it's interesting to see like what they did, what they changed, you know. But, you know, most of it's the same, some new things of course, but Largely on all the maps, it's all the same. But it's good to know otherwise. And yeah, with that, you know, the next time I do this will probably be for Black Ops 4 or whatever they want to call it. For the default map, for the secondary map. But until then, guys, you know, it's back to regular content. So, you know, theories, challenges, you know, just discussions and all that, and cinematics. So it'll be good to get back to that. But until then, guys, I'll catch you all later. Cheers.